To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today we will take a virtual tour of some of the notable homes in Greece. Our first stop, 595 Long Pound Road. This beautiful vernacular 19th century farmhouse is the home to the Greece Historical Society. Many of us have moved from one home to another, but this is a house that has moved twice. Circa 1924, when it was located at the southwest corner of Latta and Long Pond Roads, the Beatties didn't like the noise from the neighboring tavern. So they transferred the house onto oak timbers and rolled it back from the road to a new foundation. The house is significant because of its association with pioneer families in Greece, but more so for its connection to Gordon A. Howe. He lived in the house with his family from 1941 to 1965. This political legend was supervisor of the town for 30 years before becoming the Monroe County manager for 11 years. The Monroe County office building is named for him. In 1966, Wegmans Food Markets purchased the property. They were going to demolish the house. However, in 1988, under the initiative of town supervisor Don Riley, Wegmans sold the house to the society for $1 and generously funded moving it to what is now the Greece Town campus. The cupola on the front lawn once sat atop the Ridge Road Town Hall. The Historical Society was founded in 1969, and when it was less than a year old, they organized an historic house tour. There were four homes on the tour, but the beauty of a virtual tour is we can escort you to a few more homes, all from the comfort of your own home. Our next virtual tour stop is 978 North Greece Road. As stated in Snapshot 30, in October 1998, three years after being added to the National Register of Historic Places, the Covert Brody Pollock House was the first designated landmark in the town of Greece. There are three other homes that are also designated town landmarks. Our next stop is 981 Ladder Road. The house of Joseph Fleming, a town pioneer, is located at 981 Ladder Road. It became a designated town landmark in October 2012. Fleming, who was a master stonemason before turning to farming, built the house circa 1854. This beautiful Italianate style home was the centerpiece of Fleming's 300 acre farm. The main block is two stories high with a hipped roof and is flanked on both sides by a one and a half story wing. Atop the roof is a widow's walk with a fanciful balustrade and pointed finials above each corner pedestal. Did the residents climb to the roof to see Lake Ontario just two miles to the north? Joseph Fleming's descendants resided here until 2008. Our next stop, 1885 Ladder Road. The Rigney Feeney House at 1885 Ladder Road stands on the western slope of Patty Hill and is another designated town landmark achieving that distinction in 2000. It was the home of the pioneer Rigney family. Built around 1850, it is a late example of the federal style of residential architecture, characterized by the beautiful front entrance, symmetrical windows, and louvered shutters. The house was built to last and endure fierce weather with its nine inch square beams of oak set into a foundation two feet thick. Patrick Rigney was a farmer and fruit grower with 250 acres surrounding the house. His children occupied the house until the early 1940s. In the 1950s, parts of the old farm to the west and the south were developed into the picturesque acres and North Point housing tracks, and the Greece School District purchased about 35 acres of the property for Patty Hill Elementary School. The fourth owners of the house, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Feeney, undertook to restore the interior of the house to its original floor plan, updating amenities for themselves and their seven children. It was Mr. Feeney's home for more than 60 years, from 1952 until he died in 2014. Next stop, 505 Elm Grove Road. The William Payne House became a designated town landmark in October 2012 shortly after being listed in the National Register of Historic Places in June. The home was built circa 1905 for William A. Payne, 
who as Monroe County Sealer of Weights and Measures, impacted local and state commercial practices. He was one of the founders of the statewide association that established fair and uniform methods of weighing and measuring products, benefiting both merchants and consumers. He also developed education programs for fellow sealers. This house, typical of several along Elm Grove Road, has aspects of both Queen Anne and Colonial Revival architecture, a trend at the turn of the last century. Queen Anne-inspired features include the asymmetrical floor plan, the complicated roof design, fish scale shingles, and bay windows. Colonial Revival aspects are the cornice returns at the gable ends and the square posts of the front porch. The former carriage barn is now a garage. Our next stop, 550 Latona Road. Zacchaeus Colby, a prominent Greece farmer, built this 10-room pink Dutch brick Italianate style farmhouse in 1855. In 1872, he sold it to his brother-in-law, Abner Shearman. The Shearman family continued to reside in the house until 1970. Construction of 390 threatened the house, so Miss Suzanne Shearman spent $75,000 to move the house from its original location at 1777 Ridge Road West to 550 Latona Road. That was quite an undertaking. The house had to be cut in half, moved on a flatbed truck, and set on a new foundation. Upon Suzanne's death in 1970, the house was sold to the Beerworth family. In 1979, the Wegman Companies Incorporated, headed by Philip Wegman, purchased the house for their headquarters. They realized the importance of this beautiful historic structure and have made every effort to preserve and maintain the building's architectural integrity. Our next stop, 710 Ladder Road. When the Western New York Landmark Society surveyed buildings in the town of Greece in 1994, it lamented that this home was in such derelict condition. Indeed, it had been condemned by the town after a fire. When a developer planned a senior living facility on the property, he was going to demolish the barn and convert the house into apartments. Fortunately, the town's Historic Preservation Commission, along with the New York State Historic Preservation Office, SHPO, stepped up and helped to save it. The developer of Fleming Point Senior Living Center rehabbed the exterior of the house and barn using recommendations from SHPO. This house was built for the coal and railroad industrialist Arthur Yates circa 1902, probably as a summer home. The site is the former Patrick Fleming farm. He was the younger brother of Joseph Fleming. The property became known as Elm Tree Farm. The house is an outstanding example of neoclassical style, identified by the front facade dominated by a full height portico with details such as carved wood ornamentation, both Doric and Corinthian columns and pilasters, and windows with six panes on the top and a single pane on the bottom. Although neoclassical was a dominant style at the turn of the last century for public and institutional buildings, it was not common for private residences. A bonus is the gambrel roof barn with its large round arch loft opening and twin louvered cross gabled cupolas. In 1914, the home was purchased by Samuel Thayer and remained in the Thayer family for 80 years. Over the years, the house and barn were converted to several apartments. In 1994, it was purchased by Joseph Coco, who later sold the property to the developer of Fleming Point in the early 2000s. In 2007, the house and barn were purchased by Greece businessman David Wegman of the Wegman Group. Dave and his family rehabbed the interior into offices for their businesses and rented out space to other businesses. Second to last stop on this tour, 3490 Ladder Road. We've already told you about the Carpenter and Toll families that lived in this home. The house started as a simple one and a half story home when it was constructed circa 1840. It was expanded into its present day Greek Revival style about 1860. It has a porticoed temple front. Notice the elongated facade and narrow pillars, and there is some unusual carved woodwork, such as the small diamonds at the top of the Doric columns. The Landmark Society survey said that the craftsmanship was outstanding. Lou and Gloria Latragna purchased the home from the Toll family and strived for many years to maintain the building's integrity and share its history. 
After their deaths, it was sold to Fieldstone Capital in August of 2015. It became a private residence again when it was sold in September of 2020. This photo is of the home's living room, one of the few interior shots we have. Our final stop for this home tour is 442 Edgemere Drive. Not all notable homes in Greece are more than 100 years old. The Greece Historical Society has commissioned an historic resource study of the work of Thomas W. Boyd, Jr., Rochester's first African-American architect. This mid-20th century house by Boyd is on Edgemere Drive. Mr. Boyd designed at least three other homes in the town of Greece. These are just a few of the beautiful, interesting, historic homes and buildings in our neighborhoods. Drive around the streets of Greece and see what you can find. Thanks for joining us this week. <laughs> Next week is our Halloween special. We will tell you about some of the town's ghostly inhabitants. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greecehistoricalsociety.org you can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.